So guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope everything's good wherever you are. Uh, guys, uh, smash the like button as always. I always ask you guys to smash the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Hit hit the uh, bell notification so you're notified every time you know I upload a video. Make sure to join our live streams, guys. Make sure to join our live streams because our live streams... And uh, what I wanted to say before I get into the video is... All of you guys come on to camera. Like some of you guys that, in the, I know some of you feel shy and you don't want to come on and I get all of that. But as many of you come on, it's like, it's really good. I'd love to know all of your opinions. You know, I see a lot of you in the side, but I'd love to get your guys on the camera because I know some of you are shy to go on camera so you prefer to stay on the sidebar. But I think some of you would be good on camera and you probably don't know how good you can be. Uh, give you guys it'll give you guys confidence I, I personally think i'd love to have some of you more of you guys on um because some of you guys make really good points in the comment section and it's and it's 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 great to hear everyone you know it's great to hear different people making different point of views i that's why i i always encourage a lot of people to come on like if you don't want to and and you feel you know uncomfortable you don't feel comfortable coming then don't that's not a problem but if you if you do want to come on ask me for the link uh, I sent, I, p I post the link so many times during the live stream. Um, it's just great because the more people that come on, the better. The more of you that come on, the better. The more the li the live, you know, we, I enjoy it because I love to have the same people on all the time. Because like Stephen, Little Penny, these are great. These are great coming on. I want them to be on all the time. Um, but what having Stephen and Little Penny Ray. Um, Makai, uh, all of these guys have a great opinions on boxing. And what I would want is when these guys come on, is that others come on as well to maybe challenge them, maybe say, or in support of them. It will just make the live stream good. Mike as well. You know, every, like all of you guys, it's always made, it's always, it's always great. You know, it's always great having great debates on boxing. Um, and I enjoy it. I, I enjoy the live streams. And like, like Little Penny said, because he's off, um, he would love to, a live stream every day. And I'll, I'm going to try doing that as well. I'm going to try being consistent. What I'm going to try doing is, you know, make going gym early, getting gym done, and then, you know, recording these videos in the evening so I don't have to record them during the day. Then I've got more time. So then I know I've, I've recorded the videos anyway. Um, hence, I only, I only need to do a live stream. And then I can do the gym and get all these stuff in the morning that I want to get out of the way. So yeah, that's what I'm going to plan to do moving forward till the holidays obviously end, uh, which is like January 5th or something. So yeah, uh, I thought I'd give you guys a little update there. But yeah, I really enjoy the live streams, man. The live streams are great with you guys. Uh, hopefully we can get more and more people in the live streams because that'll make it great. Um, but in terms of this um, video, you know, Canelo's not a happy chap, is he? He's he's uh he's hit back. I was watching. I was reading a boxing scene article, and he hit back at the critics. You know the critics that were saying that he's ducking Benavides and ducking Charlo, uh, he, and he said haters will be haters. Um, I'm I'm at the point where, to be honest with you, and I heard people saying it on the live stream, like Makai was saying it, and certain people were saying that Canelo is is ducking. Benavidez, he's ducking chop. No, 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 they weren't saying, well, Makai wasn't saying that, but uh, the point I'm trying to make is that, you know what, they're not happy with the fact that, you know, he could be fighting Makabu and Miguel was saying, you know, he wants to get a fifth belt. And uh, Makai thinks a pointless fight, Ray thinks a pointless fight. Ray was actually saying, kind of cherry picking. And I get where people are coming from. I get where people are coming from because. Picking up a fifth belt, Max Kellerman also said this, picking up a fifth belt, yeah, you in history, you, you would also be a cruiserweight world champion. But people don't really, like, people won't really look at that and think, wow, Canelo beat Makabu and became a cruiserweight world champion. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, it, it's cherry picking in a way because... It's cherry picking because he's picking the weakest guy out the cruiserweight. Because I'm very certain Bradis and Lawrence Coley would beat Makabu. 
And Makabu was beaten by Tony Bellew, who I don't believe would beat. And I know Styles make fights in boxing, but I don't think Tony Bellew would beat Lawrence Okoli or Bradis, in my opinion. Um, so, Makabu, for me, he's a good fighter. And I'm by no means saying that's not an easy fight for Canelo. I know some people are not interested in it. And they're not really, like, some, a lot of people are not interested in the Makabu fight. They think, like Bradley said, who's he? Like, who the hell's that guy? That doesn't mean it's going to be an easy fight for Canelo. That doesn't mean that Makabu is an e easy work because he's not. I've seen Makabu fight. He can fight and he can punch. And when you're talking about size, the size difference, like that kind of weight, as Stephen would say, you, could, you know, someone could clean your clock. Makabu's no joke. You know, a left hand for Makabu on Canelo's chin, who knows what kind of reaction he'll get. Because, like I said... When you're talking about that kind of weight difference and you're talking about, like, Makabu's a big guy, trust me. He's a big guy. I know people say, well, he's not that big. He, no, no, he's big. He's big. Like, he was double the size of Canelo. And Canelo is not a small guy. If Canelo, like, Canelo is not a small guy. That's what I'm saying. Canelo's a big dude and he looked double the size. Makabu's huge, right? So, for me, personally, um... I I would love I would I would I would love Canelo to fight Baterbiev. That's the fight that I really want to see. But if he goes and fights Makabu, I'm not got a problem with it because I don't look at it as a cherry pick. It, it, people may look at it as a cherry pick because they may think there's tougher competition in the weight class below. But you see, Canelo might be motivated by by being a cruiserweight world champion. He might want to have that on his CV. Like here's the thing: we need to stop acting like Canelo's retired. Like, he's going to retire in one or two fights. Canelo will fight those fights that we want him to fight. But Canelo's not a retired fighter right now. Canelo's not, you know, it's not like he's ducking. He's going to fight those fights. But he just wants to probably put that on his CV that he was a cruiserweight world champion. That's probably what he wants to do. Now, so that might not be, look, that might not... That might not rub some fans up the right way. Because some fans might say, no, we want to see you fight Benavidez. Look... Benavidez, Charlo, these are not guaranteed tougher fights than Makabu. Because, like I said, Makabu can punch. He's a big guy. Benavidez, Charlo, is good. they're good fights as well. You know, I heavily favor Canelo in those fights. But they're good fights, just like Makabu. Maca like, I, like, if Benavidez and Charlo fought Makabu, I would pick Makabu to win like, those fights. Or, I, you know, especially Charlo, he's too small. You know, and even Benavidez, a left hand from Makabu on Benavidez's chin, it could be game over. You know, especially how defensively um, weak Benavidez is. Uh, Makabu hits him with the left hand, it could be game over. You know, even I was listening to um, Albus, Albustein, I think, and even he was saying Makabu, you know, is no mug, that's a tough fight. You know, and here's the thing. The fight that I want to see is the Baterbia fight. That's the fight that I really want to see. But if Canelo fights Makabu, it's not no Rocky Fielding. It's not, it's not, um, it's not a um, Rocky Fielding type of fight or Agni Yildirim type of fight. This is a proper fight. This is a proper dangerous fight for me. Like, does Canelo win it? Yeah, probably does. But that's no easy fight. I don't look at a cruiserweight world champion when you're talking about Canelo who's a super middleweight, a guy that, you know, started his career as a welterweight fighting a cruiserweight world champion. I don't look at that as an easy fight. I don't... Uh, he's not fighting a, a next cruiserweight. He's fighting a champion at cruiserweight. Irrespective, he's the weakest champion. He's much bigger than Canelo. He's much bigger than Canelo. The size will, is a huge... Like, the size here is... the. Difference in size is massive. That in itself can make the fight competitive. When a guy is so much bigger than you, irrespective of your skill level is so much superior to him, that in itself can make it competitive because all he might have to do is hit you once and it could be game over. Remember, look, Canelo now would be entering very dangerous territory. He'd be entering territory where you're swimming now with crocodiles. You know, you get hit once by these big guys and it could be out. Cruiserweights, that's what it's about. In cruiserweight division, you get hit once on the chin by these big cruiserweights. It's game over. Irrespective of how good your chin is, you get hit right by a cruiserweight. It's going to hurt you. 
It doesn't matter how tough you are. It doesn't matter how, what you're made out of. Trust me, these cruiserweights are big and strong. They can really punch. So when people give Canelo a lot of stick, you know, for him going up and fighting a cruiserweight world champion, I'm sorry, that's not an easy fight as far as I'm concerned. Not at all. Macabre is a dangerous fight, but there's other fights that I would rather him take. There's other fights that in, interest me more, like the Baterbia fight. That's a fight that interests me more than the Macabre fight. Like, I can understand why people don't really want to see the Macabre fight and they don't like that fight. But Canelo might want that on his CV, being a cruiserweight world champion. Would I, the fight as a fan that I want to see is the Paterbia fight, of course. That's the fight I want to see. But I, I'm not going to say Canelo's a cherry picker if he goes and fights, cru, you know, a cruiserweight world champion. No, no, not at all. Because I think that's a dangerous, I think that's a dangerous fight. I think that's a, that's, the size difference makes it competitive. The, the dif differentiation in size makes that fight competitive. I don't think Canelo's just going to walk through Macabre like that. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Canelo knocks him out in a round. Who knows? Like, but the fight that I want to see, I've made it quite... I want to see the Baterbia fight. That's the fight I want to see over any fight. But if he, if he fights Macabre, I'll still watch it. I'll still be intrigued because I know that Macabre can fight. I'm not just going to sit here and say Macabu's rubbing him. Macabu's not. Macabu can fight. He might not be the name that you were looking for, but that doesn't mean it's not a good fight. That doesn't mean that Macabu can't fight. Everybody would prefer to see the Baterbia fight, of course, because of the way Baterbia has been looking, the, the fact that, you know, people view Baterbia as a beast. But sometimes, remember this, just because a guy has got a name and a guy is more well-known than somebody else, that doesn't mean that the other guy that, that Canelo might be picking can't fight. You know, because I've seen Makabu and he can fight. He's a big, big guy and he can punch. You know, I'll, I, again, I think to criticize Canelo and saying Canelo's cherry picker and stuff like... Makabu's a better opponent than Benavides and Andre and all these guys are for. They haven't come close. And the thing is with all these guys is that they're all waiting for Canelo. So here's the thing. It's like Canelo could fight whoever and Andre will say, Can Canelo could fight Baterbiev and, and, and Andre will say, Canelo's ducking me. Canelo could fight Andre and knock Andre out and, and Benavides will say, Canelo's ducking me. Do you see where I'm coming from? But none of these guys are fighting each other. Because Canelo could fight any of these guys and the other guy will say, well, he's ducking me. So Canelo could fight Andre and Benavides will say he's ducking me. Bet he could fight Benavides and Andre will say I'm, he's ducking me. Canelo could fight Baterbiev and, and Andre and Benavides will say, well, he's ducking me. Well, you know, he was at 160 and he never fought me. And even though he would have fought a monster at 175, because that's how they all think. And I get they're all trying to get the fight. And I, listen, I have sympathy for Andre because Andre and Benavides because they both are trying to fight the top guys. It's, it's the other guys that may be avoiding them a little bit. But sometimes, like I said, I even said that why doesn't Andre move up to 175 and challenge a Bivo? Why don't he challenge a Smith? Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes you've got to do things like that because if you can't get the, the fights in your own weight class, sometimes you have to make, do take, you know... Do drastic things. You have to go up and dare to be great. That's how you make a name for yourself. Because Andre at the minute can't get the fights. So maybe if he does something crazy and pulls it off, he'd leave Canelo in a position where no, he has to fight and where the public would demand. Right now, no one's demanding for Canelo Andre or no one's, dem like, no one's demanding for Canelo Benavidez. That's not a fight which people are demanding for. Let's be brutally honest. Like, the people, I would say people are more demanding for Canelo Baterbiev more than Canelo Benavides or Canelo Andre. No one's demanding for that Canelo Andre fight. Maybe a few of Andre fans, but that's about it. But if you do something great, if you go up and do something great, and people, and here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of people keep saying that. What did Callum Smith do? What did the other guys do? Why does Andre have to do this, this and that? The fact of the matter is... Canelo fought those guys. They were champions, right? Andre doesn't have to do anything. But if Canelo doesn't want to fight Andre, 
there's nothing Android can do. However, if Android puts himself in a great position, right? And I mean, he puts himself in a position where the public are demanding that fight. The public are demanding Canelo to fight Android. Then he may force Canelo's hand because Canelo's not afraid of anyone. But at the minute, his hand's not really forced to fight Andre. There's no, there's no real demand for that fight. It's not a huge money fight. Canelo, you know, Canelo's made a lot of money. He, he makes a lot of money whoever he fights. But if, if Andre puts himself in a position like Golovkin did, like people were demanding Canelo to fight Golovkin. Golovkin put himself in that position where people were demanding that fight. Nobody's demanding. Look, no one's demanding the Canelo Andre fight like they were demanding the Canelo Golovkin fight. Would like they are demanding the Canelo Baterbia fight. Why? Because those guys put themselves, they market themselves in a certain way where people were demanding. Firstly, Andre's not the most exciting. Neither is Benavidez, and his, neither of their performances have been scintillating. They've been getting the job done against the opponents that they've been getting in the ring with. And that's the difference. Look at Baterbiev, look at Golovkin, look at what they did to market themselves, and look at the, the way they fought and the way they won fights. And the, and the way, you know, the, the, now the public is putting pressure on Canelo to fight Baterbia. And the way, you know, when Canelo was fought Golovkin, how the pressure was on Canelo at that time to fight Golovkin. Because the way the performances, the way those guys were performing, the way they were marketed. You know, so that's that's the same thing with um, Andre. And they've got to do something that puts them in a position where the public demand for those fights. At the minute, no one's demanding for those fights. A, f a set few people think, like, nobody thinks that Andre or Ben, like, few people think that Andre and, and Benavidez might win. Set few, not a lot of people. Whereas, how many people think Baterbia beat Canelo? Do you see where I'm coming from? How many people think Baterbia beat Canelo? Loads. How many people thought at the time that Golovkin would beat Canelo? Loads. And that's the difference. But there you go, guys. That's, that's this video coming to an end. Leave your thoughts. Let me know what you think, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.